Pitch over the middle. Touchdown, Louisiana. I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Coming up on this edition of Inside Louisiana Football, we have the sit-down with head coach Billy Napier. We introduce you to head strength and conditioning coach Mark Hockey, and we give you the culture. The first ever meeting between Louisiana and Coastal Carolina and conference opener for both teams meant the winner would establish some early season Sunbelt momentum while the loser would already be looking up in the standings. After trading three and outs, the Cajuns get on the board first with an eight play 79 yard touchdown drive highlighted by this 20 yard completion to Ernest Patterson on third and 15 followed by Raymond Calais' 40-yard sprint down the sideline to the Chanticleers' two-yard line. Two plays later, Trey Regas bulls his way into the end zone for the score, and Louisiana led 7-0. The Chanticleers answer with 10 points on their next two possessions. The second, 13 plays, 76 yards, Marcus out low from two yards out, and Coastal Carolina led 10-7 in the second quarter. Just before the half now, a missed field goal sets up Coastal at their 32-yard line with 28 seconds left, and the Chanticleers hit three big plays, the last coming with just four seconds left. Kilton Anderson to Kai John Tyler from 31 yards out, and Coastal Carolina takes a 16-7 lead into the half. First possession of the third quarter, and Anderson strikes again, this time on the ground, a 59-yard scamper before Corey Turner brings him down at the Louisiana one-yard line. Anderson would be injured on the play and would not return. Next play, Outlow finishes the drive and Coastal led 23-7. But the Raging Cajuns respond and show their quick strike ability in the process. Elijah Mitchell finds some daylight on the left side of the line and down the sideline he goes for 30 yards and the score. Six plays, 85 yards and only 154 off the clock. Then after a quick three and out, Raymond Calais finds a hole up the middle and he's off to the races and no one will catch the speedster from Cecilia. The 61 yard touchdown capping a three play 87 yard drive in 53 seconds to make it 23-21. Fourth quarter now, Coastal Carolina goes to the bag of tricks. A flea flicker off of the reverse and Eliza Likely is all alone at the five yard line. He is in for the touchdown and the Chanticleer is now up 30-21. But Louisiana comes right back. Andre Nunez finds Keenan Barnes on a nice touch pass, cutting the Chanticleer lead to 30-28. But that's the last time the Cajuns would see the football as Coastal grinds out the last five minutes and 20 seconds of the game. Regis and Calais both rush for over 100 yards, but it's not enough as the Raging Cajuns fall by two, 30-28. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football, Coach Billy Napier joins me for the sit down. At the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our Raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Just 
throw, end zone, touchdown! It's time for the sit down brought to you by Sonic, home of the Raging Cajun Cheeseburger. This is how we Sonic. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Football Time once again for the sit down with head coach Billy Napier. And coach, looking back at Saturday night, uh, I guess uh, disappointing would kind of be an understatement. Well, I think it's a, it was a game of missed opportunities. You know, I think we. Uh, we did make improvement in some areas on our football team. When you have a chance to go back and look at the tape, I think we do see some areas where we made improvement. Really, in my opinion, it came down to a very inefficient, effective first half for the offense. We showed what we were capable of in the second half. Defensively, we got the play count, really got out of you know kilter, and they played 72 plays compared to our 49. But we did take care of the ball. We did create a turnover at a critical time. I thought we got better in the kicking game. Uh, had a handful of penalties in the kicking game that affected field position. Uh, but I think overall we made progress. The score may not reflect that. Um, and I think our team is growing up from a leadership perspective. And I think it will benefit us as we go forward big picture wise. You mentioned the word leadership. Um, I think one of the things that came from this game was uh, nice examples of accountability and ownership for what happened Saturday. Yeah, I think we Last week was not our best week in terms of preparation. I thought we were a little bit inconsistent. Not necessarily the entire team, but maybe each unit one day or the other didn't have a great day. And I think the players really took the ownership of that, especially post-game in the locker room. I was impressed with what I heard out of some of our veteran players. Uh, and that's where we're at. We're growing up relative to what, what are the expectations, what is really required to have success. Uh, and I think that's the areas where we need to make the most progress. So let's get to the game. You draw first blood in the first quarter. Um, you get Raymond Calais going, and you go up 7 nothing. Yeah, really pleased with Raymond. You know, I think he's really improved as an inside runner, better eye discipline, better. Uh, he's making better decisions with the ball. And the guy's got explosive speed. And he's a guy we need to get more involved, and certainly he's proven that. You get to the turning point in the game now where the, the, the first half is winding down. Uh, we get a missed field goal. They turn that into a touchdown drive. They come out in the second half and get a touchdown drive. Talk about that sequence of events. Yeah, really that's where I was disappointed with what we did as a staff. I think we can do a better job for our players. I've been pretty um, public and blunt about that. You know, I think we mismanaged that situation prior to the half. Uh, myself on offense on the third and seven, and then in, I think on defense we can do a little bit better job helping our players out. But that was the biggest sequence of series in the game. You know, to miss the field goal, that to turn in a, into a touchdown with 25 seconds to go, and then another touchdown, the first possession of the second half. We're talking about a huge swing in the game. And without that, if we can just manage that situation a little bit better, we actually take the lead in the second half. It's a different football game. But the offense does show the big play, quick strike ability, coming back with two touchdowns in less than three minutes. Talk about that a little bit. Well, we ran the exact same plays we ran in the first half. You know, truth be known, we just didn't have, we didn't execute in the first half. We had some communication errors, some poor fundamentals and techniques, and you know, we I think we saw what we were capable of. You know, we we. We lost that game on offense, in my opinion, with an inefficient first half. You know, we've got to go to the park, expect to score at a, at a high level. Uh, and I think that first half really affected the big picture in the game in general. Let's talk about the penalties real quick. You look at the number six, and it doesn't jump off the page. It's not double digits. But when they came were critical parts of the game, especially in the special teams, because you get good coverage on a kick, but then the penalty added 15 yards. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I think just poor decision making, you know, and I think that's where we can coach them a little bit better. But we got to have poise and trust our training and use the correct techniques. And you know, the guys made bad choices, block two blocks in the back. Uh, I think the, you know, the personal foul for unnecessary roughness was a little bit debatable to some degree. But there's definitely some some areas where we can make improvement in the kicking game relative to making better decisions as blockers. On to Alabama. 
Um, obviously, the storylines are going to focus on yourself and Coach Saban, but you have enough to worry about with Tua and the rest of that crew, don't you? <laughs> well, this group is playing at a high level. You know, and Alabama has become the standard in college football, and I think they're a great – they're a product of a lot of hard work. You know, having been in the on the inside there and really com comprehending what they do and how hard they work. And I think Coach Saban does a great job of setting the tone. Tremendous discipline, tremendous work ethic. Uh, and this, this young team on defense is benefiting from a very high-powered offense, and they're playing well together all three phases of the game. And with all that being said, though, the focus really is on the Cajuns and getting better. Yeah, that's what this week's about. It's about making improvement as a team. It's about going back to the intangibles, about the self-discipline, how to prepare, how to practice. Uh, we need to make progress this week and go, you know, really make improvement, you know, in terms of how we go about getting ready to play a football game. So here we are in week four, three weeks under your belt, uh, had a chance to get into the routine now. So what are some of the things that you're going to be looking at to emphasize getting ready for Alabama? Well, it's really about all the things that we can control. You know, we want to eliminate the mental errors. We want to eliminate the loafs. We want to see us make improvement from a fundamental and technique standpoint. And then we've got to have a little more poise and make better decisions relative to some of the penalties that we have. But all these things are our choices and our decisions. And I think our players are starting to understand that ultimately it comes down to how they prepare, how they practice, uh, and the poise and discipline they have to execute on game day. So. That's where our focus is going to be. We've got to make improvement for the long haul here. 11 o'clock kickoff. You like it? Yeah, I think uh, in general, having been a part of these games in the past there, uh, I'm ready to get, you know, let's get on the grass and get to work there. I think our guys will be prepared to play. All right, Coach. Well, thanks, as always, for the time. Cajuns and Alabama, 11 o'clock on SEC Network. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football. Raging Cajun means wearing red on Fridays, supporting our sports teams by going to the basketball games, the football games. Being Raging Cajun means saying hi to your friends when you see them around campus or saying hi to people that you've never seen before on campus because that's who we are. The atmosphere here is electric. I mean, we have the best fans here and the energy around campus is just the same. You know, those are the same people that come to your games and support you. The student section is packed almost every game and to have that much support, it just feels good that you know people actually care. You're not just going out there and playing basketball and just you and your teammates. You actually have people that are behind you and want to see you do well. And we have many activities and events for students that are freshmen that help get them to build their Rage and Cajun spirit. Then they start going to the activities that all the other students are, are participating in, like homecoming and lanyap day and you know different things within their major and all of these things really get students start feeling what it's like to be a raging cajun not just with athletics but also with just the feel of what it's like in being the raging cajun family so whether you're interested in athletics or academics or art or orchestra as long as you're doing what you love in this university you're making this university proud and you have raging cajun spirit its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team.
to throw. End zone. Touchdown. Pass over the middle. Touchdown, Louisiana. I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Football. Darren Walker joined by associate head coach and head strength and conditioning coach Mark Hockey. And uh, before we start to get into what you do here, your home away from home, let's talk about you, the man. Um, talk about your background a little bit. Appreciate that, Darren. Great to be with you this morning. Um, I guess first and foremost, I'm married to the beautiful Catherine Freeman Hockey. We just had a beautiful little girl, Palmer McKenzie Hockey that you know just turned five months a few days ago so it's been awesome an amazing thing to watch her blossom over the past few months uh, professionally uh, born and raised in new orleans got into coaching at a young age actually my freshman year at tulane i started coaching high school ball at my alma mater jesuit high school and from there i ended up at university of alabama for six seasons under the head coach nick saban and uh, after that, I got my first opportunity as a head strength coach at University of Georgia under Mark Rick. Was there for a season. We had a pretty good year, finished with 10 wins. After that, ended up being an assistant strength coach at Florida State under uh, Coach Jimbo Fisher. And this past year, most recently, uh, got the opportunity to be a head strength coach for the second time under head coach Kevin Sumlin at the end of the year, you know, got a, a good call from a good old friend, Billy Napier, Coach Napier, gave me a great opportunity and been here since January. It's been great ever since. Now, one common denominator for every strength and conditioning coach is hype, juice, energy, whatever term you want to put on it. Uh, you bring that to every practice, every game. Just talk about how you put your spin on it though. Well, in my opinion, I think it's important to have great energy, great intensity, if you're going to uh, be a leader, if you're going to be a coach. And really your job is to put the athletes in adverse situations. And I think having great energy and great intensity, you know, helps them push through some of that adversity. Uh, but they did a tremendous job of buying into Coach Napier's vision and, and really getting to work and pushing themselves mentally and physically. I think the, the mental side of it as is, is as important as anything, you know. You know, I, I've said to the guys plenty of times, the brain's the, mo the most powerful muscle. And obviously, the way you think controls everything you do. So, you know, that physical aspect, that's important. We're going to develop that. But I think it's important as a leader and as a coach uh, that you're constantly feeding and developing that mental aspect, too. One of my roles is to echo the message of the head coach and the vision of the head coach. We have five values that we pride ourselves on here and, and developing the culture, and that's integrity, together, discipline, effort, and pride. And uh, we take great pride in, in developing and cultivating that mental aspect. Well, thanks again for the time, Coach. We'll let you get back to work. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football. its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. I'm head coach Billy Napier and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football.
The leadership on this football team has got to be at their best today. Expect adversity. Expect it. It's the nature of this game. It's going to be good things. It's going to be bad things today. We embrace that. It comes down to one simple phrase. Every man's best. That's all we need. Everybody hear me? We got enough in this room. I need every man in here to give his best today. It's that simple. Every man's best. Everybody understand? Yes, All right, let's go make a statement, man. Get in here tight. Let's go. Every man's best, okay? Make a statement on three. One, two, three. Make, make a statement. He's back to throw, now steps up, but they got a hold of him, but he gets away. Backside pursuit from Eric Guerra. 40, 35, Kale to the 30, down the sideline, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, down to the 3 yard line. And a delay to Regis, and he is in, touchdown Louisiana. Man comes in motion, and the handoff goes to Outlow, and down he goes. And shooting pass comes to the outside, and that pass is caught. 35, 40, 45 midfield down the sidelines, and Jamarcus Bradley still on his feet. 35-yard line first down. Fouls kick. Is it going to get there? It is not. It is short. Anderson rolling to his left. So he's going for all of it deep Wide to the end open. zone. Touchdown. And that'll be the end of the first half. Cajuns have got some work to do. They trail this one by the score of 16 to 7. We got a nine point game. Okay, somebody understand me? It is a nine point game. All right, we go out here and put a score on the board. Let's get a stop. Go put a score on the board and make this a one score game in our house. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Adversity no, reveals character. It's time for the leadership of those teams to be at their best. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. You get an opportunity to make a play, let's make a play. Go! Yes, Keep your poise and let's play. Everybody understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Stay together. Here we go. Together on three. One, two, three, together. Yes. Delayed handoff. That's Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell cuts it to the outside. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Louisiana. Your score now. Coastal Carolina 23, Louisiana 14. Let's just see what this defense can do once they come back on the field. Can they stop the shines and get a three and out? Get this offense back onto the field. A lot of room, 50, there 25, go. there, there he, he goes. goes to the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Louisiana. And your score now, Coastal Carolina 23, Louisiana 21. There is the pitch, and boom, down he goes. Fumble in play, and the Cajuns have picked it up. Deuce Wallace is the guy who forced the fumble. Uh -oh. There's the snap, handoff to Marable, and now the flea flicker, and going all the way down field, and the pass is caught, and that's a touchdown. Play action. Nunez going for the end zone for Keenan Barnes. 
Touchdown, Louisiana. Five minutes and 20 seconds left to play. The Cajuns are back within two. You've got to get them out here. If they get another first down, this game is pretty much over. And Marable breaks a couple of tackles, and then the ball fumbled and goes straight ahead, and Coastal Carolina is going to be close to a first down. And uh, there's the kneel down, and that'll take care of it. A disappointing end to this one tonight as Coastal Carolina holds on, and they defeat Louisiana by the score of 30-28. Right, we, we lacked discipline in that game. And you know whose job that is? It's my job. Right? And I'm going to tell you something about me. And you're going to learn this over time. And hopefully you know it by now. It's going to be mine. Does everybody understand that? I'm going to own it. All right? I'm going to own it. If I don't have this team ready to play, I'll look right in the mirror. Does everybody understand that? And what I need every individual in this room to do Whatever your role is, whatever your responsibility is, I need you to do the same thing. You cannot forget how you feel right now. Every individual in the room is disappointed. But sometimes it takes a crisis in your life for you to make a change. Everybody hear me? It's a fact. All right, but we need to wake up tomorrow morning and we got to start working on getting this football team better. And the result will come. That right there is a product of poor preparation. It's a product of poor coaching. It's a product of poor practice. It's a product of not defining the expectation for the players. Does everybody understand that? And there's one man responsible for that. Everybody got me? I'm gonna do my job better. Everybody in the room's gotta do their job better. All right? Adversity reveals character. It shows you who you really are. This team right here has got character. We gotta get the other things right. Does everybody hear me? We gotta get the other things right. And if at times like this, the leadership in the room, the player level, the coordinator, throughout the organization, everybody's gotta be at their best. Sir. How you respond will define who you are. Everybody hear me? Sir. Through the good and the bad. There's gonna be days in here where we're gonna win those games right there. And everybody's gonna be dancing right here where we're standing. Okay, and you know what you got to do at that point? You got to handle success. Right now, you got to handle adversity. You cannot let the doubt creep in. Sir. And this adversity is going to cause us to do that right there. Everybody got me? Sir. This right here is going to—it's going to cause us to come together even more. Everybody understand? Sir. Everybody in here has got to accept the challenge. Now you got to be a better teammate. Everybody got me? Sir. Everybody's got to be a better teammate, do their job better, and that starts with me. Everybody understand? Sir. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Family.